So there have been news stories floating around about a possible collaboration between Kate and Meghan and I'm just going to say it straight up, not even going to waste time today. This is Kensington Palace and Kate's PR in Overdrive. They saw that list for 40 times 40 and they are in panic mode. Crap has hit the fan and is splattering all over the palace walls, so much so that they are forgetting their own lies. Two minutes ago, they were accusing Meghan of being a ruthless, heartless bully, but now Kate and Meghan want to collaborate? I'm wondering at this point if Kate and William's branches of PR are operating separately because it was, as we were told, William who called Meghan that bloody woman, Robert Lacey, who is a royal rota mouthpiece, claimed in an article for the Daily Fail that according to palace sources, William said, the way that bloody woman treated my staff was merciless. Well, I wonder how incandescent feels about his wife working with the person he says bullied his staff. And let's not forget that Harry and Meghan's choice to partner with Netflix was branded as tasteless. And now we're seeing headlines of a possible collaboration. Folks, we know what's happening here. Kensington Palace saw that 40 times 40 list and they've realised that their attempt to destroy Meghan and her name to put anyone off from going anywhere near her has failed. It has failed epically. They've realised that all of these wealthy, powerful and connected people and organisations believe Meghan and want their name associated with her. And taking interpersonal relationships out of this and just looking at the business side of things, this is a clear indicator that these established individuals and organisations sat down with their management, had their meetings and said yes, we can gain from being associated with Meghan. This is how the game works. They're not going to attach their names and brands to something that they won't gain from. Even if they do like and believe Meghan, this is still business. And as far as they're concerned, Meghan is good business. I am sure you remember during the initial months of the Sussexes' departure, everyone who was associated with them would be attacked. Meghan signed with the Henry Walker Agency and they had to put their Twitter on private because of trolls. The founder of the 19th news site that Meghan supported said that she had been targeted as well. And I'm sure that the firm and the British press were hoping that this would continue, but actually the opposite has happened. The hate campaign is losing steam and there's no such thing as bad publicity. Even with the trolls and lunatics that might initially come with it, everyone wants to work with Harry and Meghan because of the exposure that comes with it. For every one troll, there are 20 new customers, listeners and viewers. And you can see the difference the Sussexes make with everyone they partner with. Teenage Therapy went viral and gained thousands of new followers. I didn't even know that Dax Shepard had a podcast before Harry's interview and I definitely hit that subscribe button after. He actually has some pretty interesting guests on. And I have pretty much everything Meghan has ever worn bookmarked. This is the power of the Sussexes. And remember that 4040 comes right off the back of Meghan's best-selling book, Harry's hit TV series. Almost every month, the Sussexes give us something fresh. They are no longer bound to the firm's rules and they are no longer operating at 50% of themselves. The firm and their press hounds have a problem now because all of this time they accuse Meghan of being too Hollywood, but it's that Hollywood sparkle that they so desperately need now to survive in this modern era. In this new era, it is 100% a popularity and likability contest. And simply having a royal title is no longer enough to excite people and keep them interested. And if you think about it, even when there was genuine excitement around the royals and genuine interest, it was mostly around the era of Diana. No other royal, British or of any other nationality has ever come close to that amount of interest. And Harry and Meghan are the first royals in history to become commercially successful mainstream celebrities. And it's not their royal titles that their fans love them for, it's their authenticity and star power. 
This is why most people in the Sussex squad laugh when we hear people screaming, take the titles, because it's like, um, okay, it's not going to make a difference to their popularity. They may have personal reasons for wanting those titles, but in terms of their popularity and their careers going forward as philanthropists, as producers, as entrepreneurs, as VCs, it doesn't make a difference whether or not they have those titles. But back to the issue of Kate and Meghan, because I sidetracked a bit there, I don't know what at this point Kate does, because on the one hand, Kensington Palace so far have tried to position her as this stoic queen consort ready to stand by her husband when he is king. On the other, because of Meghan's popularity, they now want to push her as a voice for women without actually having her be vocal about anything, because the monarchists want a mannequin that never complains and never explains. And they consistently have said that this is what they love Kate for and what they hated about Meghan, that she was not a silent mute. So which of these personas does Kate take on? Does she become the stoic queen consort that never explains and never complains? Or does she come into the modern era and follow Meghan's templates? She's had 10 years to carve out a path, but she hasn't. And I think ultimately the type of royal Kate wanted to be just doesn't sit right with where we are now as a society, now that we're having more conversations about wealth, privilege and social justice, and the proverbial veil is being lifted. So put side to side with a woman like Meghan, Kate cannot compete. And it's not that it should have ever turned into a competition, because I think they can both be their own women, but the press and the derangers decided that they would make it a competition, and they've put Kate into a precarious position. Her most notable projects, The Big Five Questions and the Hold Still Photography book that she helped curate and did a forward for, have been in the last two years, whereas Meghan has a history of projects and what she's doing now is simply a continuation of what was effectively halted when she joined the royal family. Meghan and Kate are just way too different, I think, for there to be any type of meaningful collaboration because Meghan works quickly, she's very hands-on, and she likes to connect with people on the same level. So I don't think that there will be a collaboration because that would mean Kensington Palace would have to explain why Meghan the bully who's causing human rights abuses with her avocado eating habit is now working with perfect Kate that never does anything wrong. That is all for now. I just want to say thank you. The channel has grown so quickly. I've got so much coming up for you guys. Duchess of Success is going to grow. No bad energy, my darlings, and I will see you in the next one. Ciao!